to the book of First Kings. First Kings. First Kings, chapter seventeen. First Kings 17, First Kings chapter 17, starting at verse 8. which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, uh, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and for my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me there a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and afterward make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. I just want to speak for a few minutes. It won't stop. It won't stop. It won't stop. It won't stop. Father, in the name of Jesus, illuminate your word to us through the power of your Holy Spirit. That, Father God, we may be edified and strengthened and that our hope and faith would increase in you through Christ, through the power of your Holy Spirit. And those who are hearing who have not a relationship with you through Jesus the Christ and have not been redeemed again and have not been born again by the power of your Holy Spirit, open up our ears, our hearts, in our spiritual eyes that we may see and hear and receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, any of you ever had been down to your last meal? I'm talking about you didn't have nothing. Amen. If you're a college student, you, you've been down to your last meal before. A amen. Amen. If you're a college student, I know you know how to pray. A amen. Amen. If you're a college student, you have been on your last meal. Amen. One thing about college students, they know how to give the home report. The home report. <laughs> amen. Amen. You know how to get a home report, right? Amen. Amen. That's why I stayed near home. I stayed near home. I can get 15 minutes to get me a meal. <laughs> amen. 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 Mama was working, grandma had the chicken flowing. Baby, you get out of class, just stop by the house. I said, you got that anointing, you got that anointing there, don't you, Grandma? Amen, amen. That was, that was back, uh, Grandma had chicken better than Popeye's. Amen, amen. She had the brown paper sack. And I knew if the paper sack was just greasy. 
Breeze. Oh, I knew it was going to be long. Amen. I ate and drove at the same time. Threw the bones out of one another. Amen. Amen. Want to bless some little dogs who was hungry right along the way. Amen. Amen. But if you've never been down to your last meal, and you've never been to, anybody been to your last dollar? Now, I know I'm going to hit home now. Amen. You've been to your last dollar. It, you, you know, you get the last dollar, you want to hold on to it. Uh, you know, like that, going to take care of everything you need. But it's just something about holding on to that last dollar. Amen. 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 Y'all look at like Deacon Oz. Deacon Oz just got that annoying dollars just going to fly into you. <laughs> Amen. You can shake your hand. Yeah, okay, y'all. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. But when you're down to your last meal, your last dollar, what is your mindset? Lord have mercy. Lord help me. Come on now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hey, you did it before, you can do it again. Amen. Start singing like my boy, huh? Did it before, oh, you can do it again. Okay, yeah. Lord, y'all don't like old school nor new school. What do it take for y'all? <laughs> all right. But the point I'm trying to make is you all, often you all, our mentality can be it's the end when it may be just a new beginning. Yeah. Amen. Often God, God brings us to the end of something so that he can start something new in our lives. Amen. And often we think when, when there's, a, there's a, a death of something, a death of a friendship or a loved one or a relationship or even having to leave people in things that we knew that we were familiar with, we think that's the end. But how many know that God loves starting and doing new things? He said, I'll do a new thing. He said, before I tell you, it's going to spring forth. All right? God loves doing new things because he likes showing us new facets of his being that we're not aware of. Hey, and I love God because he likes doing new stuff. I don't know about y'all, but I get bored easily. Amen. If you don't really know no me, you might not think so. But when it, when it comes down to me, I get bored. I'd be like, Lord, make somebody a toe go out there and then cut off or something. I do. I, I, amen. Amen. I go to the funeral home, I see somebody late yesterday, they just watch me. Not yesterday, but Friday, they watch me. Uh, they told me, come on, we got the clothes. I said, okay, I just want to come in and view. You know, just want to view, and that's all. Amen. And I went, they roped it off. I'm like, man, where y'all gonna rope it off? What y'all scared of? She ain't gonna get up. And there's the Lord tell me to lay hands on. Amen. They just stood in the door. I'm like, what y'all watching for? Amen. Amen. I started to jump the rope, but the law didn't say so, so I didn't want to be disobedient. I want to say, I want to see when she get up again, y'all stop looking and y'all run out the door. That has to be your mentality. Amen. When I saw, her, oh, she look good. She look like she awake already. I'm like, Lord, she can't look that good and then go in the ground. Come on now, dog. Y'all don't like me so. I like, she looks so good, hair straight, makeup on point. Lord, you can give her 10 more, can't you? <laughs> boy, she would have got up, boy, they, they would have been gone. <laughs> they would have came back. Hey, I already told them, they know that funeral home. I already told them, I'm going to come over here one day. One of them going to come up. Y'all going to have to get an insurance by the back. I think that's why they watch me while I go. And I think... I think they watching me because they know I'm up to something. I keep asking God. Y'all, some of y'all been looking at me like something wrong with pastor. Y'all don't read y'all Bible. The Bible says lay hands on the sick, raise the dead. Spiritually dead, physically dead. Amen. 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 All right. Okay, let me move on. Y'all don't like my raise the dead. Amen. Stories. My desire to raise the dead. Amen. Amen. You say if you want to do it. Okay. Bless y'all. Anyway, 
Elijah the Tishbite. Anytime that there's an ite on the end of a name, that means that there is mixture. There is mixture. All right. So uh, they believe that um, Isaiah, who was from the town of Tishbe, was a foreigner. But often God has to bring foreigners to straight stuff out that folks in the same realm won't do anything about it because they, they have conformed to the stuff around them. And he has to bring something new who ain't in the system. He brings somebody outside the system who won't go along with the system that's corrupt to straighten out the system. And then he brought Elijah and he just appeared. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Came to King Ahab who were married to Jezebel whose daddy name was Ethbel. And Jezebel was a bad girl. Oh, Jezebel had brought idolatry into Israel. And she was a high-level witch. Yes, she was. Jezebel was so bad that King Ahab wanted neighbor's vineyard. And he went and asked for it and came back crying. And Jezebel said, what you crying for? He said, you gonna give me the vineyard. She said, ain't you the king of Israel? Just take it. But just because you have authority don't mean that you can just take stuff. Amen. Amen. If God ain't giving it to you, you can't take it. And guess what? She, she lied on Nathan and said that he blasphemed the Lord in the kingdom. And had some some heathens to kill him. Mm -hmm. And boy, she had introduced witchcraft on a whole nother level. She had introduced Baal. All right, Baal they thought controlled the weather. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't think there's still Baal worship going on? Amen. They want to make everything green now. They want everything to move by electricity. They so concerned about global warming. Bell worship. Bell worship. Y'all just ain't caught it yet. They, 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 the bell worshipers ain't dead, y'all. See, the bell worshiper think that bell controls the weather. But my Bible tells me that God commands the stormy wind. He says when it rains, when it snows, when there's a drop. God, our heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and earth, controls the weather. Now we know just because Adam messed up and he has given dominion over the earth to Satan, that the enemy is the prince of the power of the air and that he can manipulate the weather also. Amen. But God is sovereign. Amen. Amen. And so guess what? Elijah had to show up and let him know you got the whole country in idolatry. Kind of sound like our country, don't it? Is in idolatry now. Now you want to control the weather. And when you're in idolatry, there's a lot of confusion. Folks don't know their identity. Hello. Amen. 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 You get high place worship. Amen. Amen. They can worship all the high places, but it is almost an abomination to come to a fellowship with more than 50 people. I'm talking when you get into Baal worship. All right. Let me move on. I don't like that story either. All right. Then Elijah showed up and he said, look here. It will not rain according to my word. He said, it ain't going to rain. He said, it ain't going to rain. There will be no that, and he said, as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And then the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, get thee hence, turn eastward, hide thyself to the brook Cherith before Jordan. He said, now I commanded the ravens to feed you there, and you're going to drink from the brook. All right? Now, when a man of God has the word of God on his lips, when he speak that word, it's going to happen. Why? Because it's God's word. Amen. But God needs a man to speak the word so that the word can be enforced. Because the Bible says that the heavens and the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of man. So when a man, a woman of God, speak the word of God, it enforces that word on the earth. And when a man of God say, it ain't going to rain, it ain't going to rain. 
Amen. But that was spoken to come against Baal worship because it would prove to the people of Israel that Baal don't run nothing. That the Lord God controls it all. And he controls it all through men and women whom he has chosen to enforce his word. And once he showed up and told them they weren't going to rain, guess what, you all? The same word that we sent out soon affects even us. Yes, sir. He sent that word and everything was good for a while. But how I many, you know, even if it don't rain, even when you go outside and it don't rain, there's still dew on the ground. Yes, sir. The ground is still wet. Can you imagine how the vegetation, the trees, and the fruit trees, and everything dry up when you don't have no dew on the ground? No rain coming, no dew on the ground. Stuff is just brown. Come on, y'all. Some of us like them brown, y'all, because we don't have to cut grass. As long as some water can come out the fossil, I'm all right. Uh, y'all got me. And the folks don't like cutting grass. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all brothers trying to hold your pinky finger up because you don't want to get your wife, man. It's okay. Amen. Amen. So when he said it, eventually God told him, now I want you to go by the brook. And then I'm going to have ravens feeding you. Ravens are unclean birds. They eat dead stuff. So you're going to tell me you're going to feed me by a bird that will peck on dead stuff. But you're going to have me with them having stuff in their mouth or under their claws. And they're going to bring it to me after they've been pecking on dead stuff. But the Bible said that when you eat something, it's sanctified by prayer. So what could harm you, which could transfer virus and bacteria, when you sanctify it with prayer in Jesus' name, it don't hurt you. Y'all don't with me? When you're a woman, a man of God, you're a child of God, there's stuff that some folk can't eat, but you can eat it because God touch it. Lord, have mercy. So he's at eat by ravens. Amen. Breakfast. Amen. Lunch and dinner. He's just waiting on it. <laughs> Y'all ain't with me. I'll be like, hey, right over here. Right over here. Right over here. Right over here. What you bring me today? Amen. 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 Y'all, that, it would have been me. I'd have been Eliza. I'd have spoken Raven like, <laughs> right over here. I don't need you going over there. Right here. Uh, Y'all don't speak Raven, do you? Uh, but, uh -huh, but you got all them tones, but don't speak Raven. <laughs> I bet if you were hungry and stuff dried up and you saw a bird with some bread in their mouth, I don't know about y'all, but I'm like, ah, ah, I'm right here. Drop them down on me. Hey, the way things looking, y'all. Y'all, but I'm telling you, you better learn another tongue. You better get an auction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At some point, though, y'all, guess what happened? No rain, no dew. The brook dried up. Yes, sir. What happens when you release a word and then the word affects your life? Oh, I'm prophetic. No, you are. Release it then. But what when it come back around and look at you in the face? Ooh, you better have another word from the Lord to handle the word that you sent out. See, that's why the Bible says man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the what? Mouth of God. Some of y'all are still leaning on old prophetic words that are worn out and done. And guess what? You are starving spiritually because you can't go on to the next level. You still claiming what God did to you five years ago when he spoke to you. That's old. And it's already been performed. Move on to another realm of glory in God. And you wonder why your ministry ain't going nowhere. You operate off an old word, but no fresh anointing. No fresh word. Oh, Lord, I want to tell some folks something yesterday, but I don't know if they would have heard me. I told them on the slide, though. Y'all know how I speak in code. Speak in parables. Amen. Amen. Told me your heart is overwhelmed. You get to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. Higher than I. What I try to tell them, guess what? You still looking at man. 
and you ain't looking at God. Because even the man of God was crying out for God to lift him up. I don't know about y'all, but hey, y'all bless me, love me, hug on me, all that good stuff. Thank God for y'all, but guess what? Even your preacher need help. He need God to help him. Y'all got me? You, if all your hope is in the preacher, you are in trouble. Amen. If your hope is just stuck in the preacher, you are in trouble. If you can't look no higher than your man of God, you are in trouble. What happened when he need help? Elijah had the word of the Lord on his milk, on his mouth, but look, he gonna need some help. Bob said, when stuff dried up, then God, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came unto him. See, we must continue to listen to the Lord so that when stuff goes dry, we know how to shift. Now, let me tell you, when God brings shifts in people's life, sometimes you all, he's closing you off and he's shifting you out of one territory because that territory is dried up and can no longer feed you and it can no longer quench your thirst and if you stay there you're going to starve there are folks who stand in places and they are spiritually starving they are spiritually thirsty and they don't, can't even realize that what they're going through emotionally and relationally and spiritually is because you can't get no nourishment there because that, there's a word that has been pronounced against that place and it can no longer feed you. It can no longer quench your thirst. What is it that God has spoken a word against and dried it up and you still trying to get life out of it? You trying to make stuff happen. When the word of the Lord comes against something and he say ain't nothing going to happen, ain't nothing going to happen. I don't care what you do. I don't care how much witchcraft you throw up. Your witchcraft can't control the weather. Y'all ain't with me. See, when God deals with areas, even of kings and presidents in government, God has spiritual governmental authority to speak to those areas, to confront them, to repent, so that he can bless the land instead of the land being cursed. That's why men and women of God who operate in that realm as governmental apostles and prophets have to speak against the status quo that are going against what God has commanded so that stuff can turn around. How many of y'all know that you all, before God is going to turn some stuff around in our country, we literally have to speak truth to error and falsehood so that we can return to being blessed. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy now, all right? Mm-hmm. Keep going to the gas tank as the prices keep going up. At some point, you all, if you ain't pumping nothing out, you ain't going to be putting nothing in. It really is signifying that guess what? The brook is drying up. Here it is. And the word of the Lord, you all, when the word comes, you can't tell me you're a preacher and yet you can't hear no word. And you ain't going to be able to understand the word you hear if you don't understand the word that was written. Because there are a lot of folks that hear by familiar spirit. All you do, I, I'm, you do this trying to heal. I'm trying to heal. That This is natural. I'm going to say it again. I hope people do it like this. What you stretching for? The spirit of the Lord lives in you. If he got to speak from outside, you are immature. Doing this ain't a sign of maturity, it's a sign of immaturity. I'm like, why are you stretching like that, baby? He living in you. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. The word of the Lord comes with instructions. The word of God cleanses. The word of God washes. The word of God is creative. The word of God is powerful. The word of the Lord gives you health. Proverbs chapter 4. Guess what? The word, the word of the Lord is food for you. Guess what? Guess what? It ain't it the sincere milk of the word? Amen. Ain't it the bread of the word? Ain't it the meat of the word? Good God Almighty. Now, guess what? Guess what? Faith comes by what? And hearing by the word. So you can't even hear if you ain't got no word. 
So word increases your hearing. But if you ain't in the book, how you gonna get well? How's God gonna do creative stuff in your life? Good. How you gonna eat spiritually? Amen. Amen. See, when you're a baby, you need milk. All right, get a little older, give me some bread. Then you real, give me some meat. I need something gonna stay in my stomach for a couple of days before it digests. I need something to hold me down. Y'all, I look slim, but I can eat, y'all. Don't invite me to your house. Hey, don't invite me. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now. Because you're gonna talk about me. Yeah, I'm prophetic. I'm telling you ahead of time, you're gonna talk about me. Then can I have a couple more fish chicken? What? You know, Pastor, they ain't had no chicken yet. What did they eat? Because I already prophetic time. Now, don't make me just eat the chicken from over here. <laughs> see, I'm telling you, it's good when somebody go ahead and tell you, I know you're going to talk about me before you talk about me, so you go ahead and talk about me because I don't care. Just give me them two more pieces of chicken. <laughs> see, when you get to that level, you don't care what folks say. Amen. 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 Somebody said, I was going to invite him. I don't know now. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. The word of the Lord. The word of, see, God's word is what's on God's heart. What's on God's mind. It's God's advice. It's God acting. It's God's business. It's God's occupation and matter and matter in which he's going to work. So he sends the word of God. Guess what? The word of God even show you where to go. The Bible says the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my hand. Oh, yeah. You need the word. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 said, for the word of God is quick. Good God Almighty. Some of y'all think y'all fast. Word of God is what? Quick. Not only that. It powerful. You're trying to knock somebody out. Put the word on them. The word will knock them out. Good God Almighty. When they came to get Jesus, boy, Jesus said, here I am. They fell back. Why? He's the word. And when he spoke, they all fell out. Oh, man, the next time you got some problem with somebody and they come looking for you, just say, here am I. Oh, y'all ain't getting it. You say it in the Holy Ghost, they just going to fall back. Ah. Mm -hmm. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. You don't need no knife. Just get the word. Piercing even unto the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. Good God Almighty, in the joints, in the marrow. It even get down to folks' joints. Let folks keep messing with you. They, joint, they, they, they start hitting the joints on you. Y'all ain't feeling me. All right. Mm -hmm. That's why she's stiff. <laughs> Amen. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. The word will start discerning what folks think. It didn't even tell you she's thinking this. Oh, how can the word do that? Because he'll give you a word of knowledge. Yep. Oh, yes, it will. And the word came. The word. Of, now, notice it say the word of the Lord. So that means that there's some. you can get some word from some other sources. Right. See, but he specifically said the word of the Lord. See, when the Lord word speak, the Bible said God's word is pure. Right? It's purified seven times. And guess what? The word of the Lord abided forever. Y'all look bored. Look, Lord Almighty. If it ain't the word of the Lord, then you're listening to lying spirits, seducing spirits, doctrines of demons. See, doctrines of demons come to change mindsets to turn you away from God. Y'all with me? Word of the Lord came, and guess what the word told him? Rise. Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now look at here. Now, when it says arise, look at what this literally means here is saying what God's words speak. Amen. You ever want to do something and then the scriptures came up in your mind? Come on, y'all. I think that's why sometimes folks want to skip over certain verses because they because I don't, I don't want God to talk to me on that verse. That's the area that we still try to hold on to. So you flip over. And the Holy Spirit said, go back. And you still know, I think God want me to read this today. Read what I told you to read. Am I right about it? Am I the only one that don't did that? Hey, Amen. I flip over. Oh, I don't think it's what he wanted. God said, uh, go back. Go, go back. Go back to that verse. All right. 
Then you don't go back, then you go to sleep, and then the Holy Spirit they start speaking that verse to you. Yes, and then you can't sleep. What's wrong? I just can't sleep. No, you don't want to deal with the issues that you're faced with, and you don't want to go to the word that, guess what, can trim some stuff off you. Oh, Pastor, you preaching today. Amen. Amen. Arise. To rise literally means become powerful. Become powerful. Be established. Be confirmed. Endure. Be fixed. Be valid. Be fulfilled. Persist. See, when you arise, when God tells you to, you start being established. The Bible says this, order my steps in thy word. The reason the steps slip you all because they're not steps that are ordered by the Lord. We have to be in the word of God. And it says, arise, get thee. Oh, walk. Walk. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible also says that we should walk circumspectly and not as a fool. Am I right about it? Lord, y'all work with me. We can get through this quick. Amen. Y'all stay quiet. I'm going to tarry on it. Come on, Pastor. Oh, dang it. That's, that's it, see? A preacher likes some help. Come on, hey, that's it now. That's it. That's it. That's it. Boy, you got to do it like an old client now. Yeah. Come on, boy. Hey, hey. Now we go. Now we get. Now we get. Get thee to Zarephath. Get to the place where you're going to be refined. You know what refinement is? Refinement is when your faith and my faith gets tested with fire and circumstance. Yes, sir. Yes, so when God tells you to get up and go to a certain place that you don't want to go to because ain't nothing but a lot of witches over there and warlocks. You don't know you staying in a place can still say that the place is blessed when God say, I've cursed it. I'm going to say that again. If you represent God and you've given a word against the system that is against God, but you stay in the system when God has told you to leave the system, you're confirming that they are right. And when God shifts you out of that, what he's saying is, I am removing my anointing, I'm removing my blessing, and when you see him depart, you in trouble. He is the only one who is hearing from me that is can speak to you on the level that you are on. And when he leaves, my blessings leave. And you're going to be confirmed as evil because you won't repent. And there are people saying, God, don't tell me to stay. Okay, well, when, what's coming on them? It's going to come on you. When God says, get up and shift to Zarephath, you anointed, but now I've got to refine you some more, Elijah. Oh, you anointed, but, but I want more of my anointing to flow out of you. There are some places that certain miracles don't happen until you get in place. Before I came down, there are certain things that I didn't see till I got here. I was like, Lord, I want to see some, some I want to oh, I want to see some blind eyes open. And we have seen a woman's eyes completely blind be opened up here in this house. He said, you ain't, you ain't gonna see this kind of stuff where you at, son. You're gonna have to shift. And when you shift, there's certain things gonna shift also. You got me? So when I shifted. That was coming to a place of being. See, when God shifts you, sometimes you all, He's refining you. God told me that He shifted me. When you shift, they ain't got no job. That's refining. You, you want me to go down there, take an hour to get down there, have a job. It, it takes gas and a car to drive an hour, God. <laughs> Duh, Troy, you think I don't know that? You just do what I tell you to do and don't worry about resources. Resources going to come when you do what I tell you to do. Some people, y'all are worried about resources. Just get in place and the resources will come. The relationships will come. What you need to complete God's will and purpose will come when you get in place. Boy, I ain't hurt for nothing. I've gained more weight than I ever had in my life since I've been down here. Lord, I don't think Mama Dora put about four, four hogs in, in them custards. Because guess what? Now my pants tight. Oh, I was struggling trying to keep weight on me. 
Oh, good God of mine, I put on some jeans now they look like skinny jeans. Why? I'm talking about when you shift in place. Y'all got me? Hey, man, you got to shift in place. What is it that God want to refine you? He wants to refine you and take your ministry to another level. Look at here. Go to Zarephath. Now look at here. I'm, I'm leaving Jezebel and now I'm going where her dad is. I'm going from a witch to a warlock. warlock. Wait a minute now. This, this can't be God right here. How I'm going to go from a witch to a warlock? God is letting you know uh-uh. This is just where the witch came from. I can bless you with a warlock and he don't even know you there. See, Elijah, I'm taking your ministry to another place so that you can be right in the source of where witchcraft come from and it still won't affect you. Good God Almighty, y'all ain't with me. It's just making me happy right here, you all. Which belonging to Zidon, you going fishing. Zidon means a fish. You're going to catch some fish. There are some folks that need to know me, Elijah, but you need to go so that they can see my power working through you through the word that's in your mouth. And you stay here. There's somebody that won't know me on the level that they need to know because you staying stuck in a place that's dried up anyway. Move here, he says, and dwell there, meaning that you're going to be there for a minute, Elijah. Mm -hmm. This ain't going to be you uh, a few little weeks of ministry and you move on. This ain't going to be no one you look here and I'm going on to my next assignment. Sit down somewhere. This is going to take some years. Hello. Ooh, y'all quiet this morning. You thought you were just going to tip in here for one year, year and it was going to be all good. Hey, Amen. I thought the same thing. Lord, we're going to go hit this thing quick. Boom, boom, boom. Building going to come up within a few years. Ministry going to pop off. Then we're going to move to the next time. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> this, is going, this is a long term right here, bro. You might as well settle on in and get used to the customs. <laughs> hey, Amen. Don't worry, I'm going to have Sherman and Craig up the chicken. I know you like chicken. <laughs> it's going to be mobile for a while. Don't even bring it near you. Y'all won't get with me. See, when you settle in, God starts working off stuff around that you like. Right. Amen. Amen. I like your little pepper, by the way. Amen. Amen. Because look here, behold, look. See, the prophet's vision has to be expanded. Behold, see, can't you see it, Elijah? Behold, look, I have commanded. I have commanded. Now, when God commands somebody, sometimes you all, there are folks who know they could. They command it, but they don't know they command it. Yeah. Let me help you. Anybody else say, uh, God, God ain't going to give you no word for me unless he already spoke to me. Yeah, now it could be he's spoken to you and he give a word of confirmation but get what? There are times when he don't tell you nothing. Hello, you don't know nothing. <laughs> God will tell you stuff that you did not know. Hello. I'm going to break up that little, little stuff you thought that was, was it. He can't tell me nothing God already don't told me when if you already knew it he would have to tell you. Uh -huh. I, I'm up in your little meeting. <laughs> I ain't gonna go no deeper though. Yeah, I don't wanna tell you everything because y'all be looking cockeyed for about five weeks mad at your pastor. I'm trying to keep peace in the house. I love you. He said, Behold, I have commanded. Look here, God, he's commanded. He has constituted or enjoined or given or charged to someone who don't even know that they've been charged to take care of you. And guess what? They don't even think they have the resources to take care of you. Lord, well, let me move on with this. Look, at, he said, I have commanded a widow, a widow woman to sustain. Now, this is all. Lord, of the whole people, why don't you just uh, have one of the kings take care of me? Often you all, we looking for big folks and then we missing out on the person that God has uh, commanded to feed us because they don't look like we think they ought to look. If, if the church ain't the size, I think the church should be for the ministry that I have. Yeah. That ain't the pastor I think that I need to be with. He can't see nothing. 
Well, that's why you there to have another set of eyes since you think he can't see. And then when you get there, you're going to find out that while you dreaming, he can tell you when the dream dropped down in your life. And you think you can see a little bit. Hello. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is this, you all. We have to stop being so small-minded that think that God has to have big people, big-minded people to take care of us. A lot of us grew up in grandma's house with a lot of old children around and one pot fed everybody. Am I right about it? One pot of beans and some cornbread fed everybody in the house and some more folks in the community too. Am I right about it, you all? Look, Lord, I ate so much cornbread, but I got peas, cornbread, and rice. I still love it right now. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I feel the Lord coming to pump me for cornbread. Good God Almighty, black eyed peas. Woo, Lord, good God Almighty, and blessings of the field. Y'all won't come with me. I can't preach on that. But what I'm trying to say is, God will feed you through unlikely sources. Grandma on her social security check, feeding everybody in the community. Everybody knocking on the door and say, hey, mom. Hey, they ain't in the family. Just what they, they, they God's child, they my child, baby. Come on in here and sit down. What I'm trying to tell you is this. God is so awesome and so good, he will prove how awesome he is by taking the least and showing out through the least. I'm so glad that God takes the least and then blesses us with the least to show how great he is. And a lot of us are missing out on God's greatness because we're looking for the big, but won't see God in the small. He in the small here, so he arose obedience with to Zarephath. He went to that place where he's going to get refined in his prophetic ministry. Refined in prophetic ministry. Small place. No, nowhere. Cows and chicken and hogs and ah. Small ministry. Not at now. One flashing caution light. I know I not prophetic on him. Amen. But the rooster. <laughs> Amen. Who don't lie? <laughs> Y'all, you catch that if you know the Bible. Amen. This woman, look at here. Look at here. We often, you all, look at it. You think you're going to sustain somebody, but they are sustaining you. Oh, I'm a prophet. I'm prophet of such and such. Mm -hmm. I got a little old widow lady who gonna give you some wisdom. And she gonna tell you the reason you still single, baby. Because you're too prideful. And you don't know how to submit to nobody. So take your prideful, prophetic self and humble it. Pastor, see that you get no love offering. That's okay. That's okay. God, God bless me for just telling the truth. Amen. Amen. If it could, just say ouch. 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 I got somebody who's going to sustain you. They're going to bless you. They're going to increase your ministry. Your anointing going to go to another level when you meet them. And, and you think that they need you, and they do, but you need them just as much as they need you. Uh, it, it's like, okay, oh, you can preach, but you need some people to preach to. The, the oil don't flow until you're in front of what God wants. Also, if you think you are, you need the people just as much as the people need you. You can't be no preacher without the people. I'm going to say that there are some folks who think that they, they, they so up there that they don't need folks. Don't about your business. No, I need y'all. Y'all are confirmation that God called me. Y'all got me? See, we see each other. I need you and you need me. I need to pray for you and you definitely need to be praying for me. Amen. 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 We need each other. There's some giving and receiving in this thing, you all. And guess what? 
how in the world can I meet somebody that God has commanded in a place which is the source of witchcraft? Right, 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 right. That lets you know that God got folk that he talked to. I don't care where you go. I don't care how bad it looks. God got somebody there who can represent him. And the Bible says, say, he arose when the Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now, you all, I don't know about y'all, but this your last, you're getting stuff together for your last meal. Here come the bald head man. Yes, sir. With his robe. Yes, sir. And he alone. He's annoying. He's annoying. He's annoying. He's annoying. Now, if y'all, if y'all read y'all Bible and know how Elijah looked, he had it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and he ain't got on no skinny jeans. <laughs> and no slim fit pants. He got on a leather girl. Y'all look like y'all don't read y'all Bible. You gonna come up to me with your camel hair coat and leather girl. And say, give me some walk. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do today if somebody came up to you with some camel hair on and a leather girl? You gonna run, you? Come on, you gonna run, run, run? Would you run or would you would you be obedient? How many? Oh, this see, this on the flip side of the thing now is dealing with us and not the man of God. I, how, the man of God might not show up looking like you think he ought to look. He may not sound the way you think he should sound, but that's no indication on the anointing that's on that person's life. He might not even look prophetic. He might not even look apostolic. He might not even look like a pastor or a evangelist or a teacher, nor her, but that might. But guess what? It could be you're judging not out of appearance, but you don't see what's in the heart. It could be that the anointing that is necessary for your life is going to come in a package that don't look like you think it should look. Right. Here it is. Yeah. This widow woman means that her husband had passed away. God loves widows. I'm going to say that again. God loves widows. When you read this Bible, you're going to find out wherever there's a widow, the Lord is watching. The Lord is providing. This widow has no covering. It's gathering sticks. And he calls her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel. I need some water in a vessel. You know what the Bible says? If you give a prophet, right. you will receive a prophet. Okay. See, baby, I need the water so I can release the reward for your obedience. All right. See, your obedience to what the man of God asked for, that God has commanded you to give, even though you just might now be catching up with it, is to release the authority of the blessing on your life. I'm going to say it again. When you don't do what's been commanded by the Lord that he's commanded you to do, for the man or woman of the Lord whom he is sending, then guess what? Your stuff get held up. You won't stay on your last meal. How long that last meal gonna last you? Boy, I remember one time God told me to bless the man of God. I said, no, Lord, not the last hundred. No, not the last hundred, Lord. I ain't taking with y'all. I said, not the last hundred, Lord. You don't get paid for two more weeks. Do you hear me, Lord? I know you know all things, but I don't get paid for two more weeks. Well, if you know I know all things, why are you telling me that? You're telling me that because you don't really want to release it. Am I right about it, y'all? Hey, Amen. So all servants, I'm wrestling. Can't even listen to the word because I'm wrestling whether I'm going to obey and release the money. Lord, I, I held on to it. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I held on to that thing. Man, and finally as I was getting ready to go out, I just had to ask. <laughs> now, somebody who tell you when you release money that you all happy and everything, look, look at that always. 
Now, I know he said give heartily and all that, but that was my last hundred, y'all. Amen. And I worked at the University of Georgia. No overtime, no nothing. Your old hours were set at that time. And you ain't going to get paid for two. Ain't no advance my paycheck or not. Ain't nothing that's coming. I said, now, Lord, ooh, this really better be you. <laughs> and when I release it, look, can I tell y'all something? It's like my gas hand just kept just hovering. Like it didn't move. I said, no, Lord, oh, wait a minute now. Something going on now. I went back and worked for three days and it seemed like it stuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is that there's favor that God can release through your obedience. Anybody ever had a gas hand that didn't move because you were obedient? Yes, Lord. Guess what? He, he, make, he, he make it just, just keep going. Lord, all fumes. Lord, anybody ever been down to the fumes? Amen. Amen. Your gas light, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, like you were back in the day in the 70s. Flashlight. <laughs> Neon light. Lord, you better show up now. <laughs> Y'all with me? I'm talking about when you obey God in a flashlight. Come on, some of y'all, y'all were dancing on flashlight back in the day. You, you were obedient, it was flashing. you like, God, I thought you were going to say, he said, you had you gave out of gas yet? Anybody ever did the flashlight for three days? Amen. I have. Amen, amen, amen. Here it is. I need a little water in a vessel. I need water in a vessel because guess what? I got the water of the word to give to you. I'm going to quench your thirst. There's going to be, your hope is going to be restored. Your joy is going to be restored. See, you had a death now. Now all you got is a death mentality. Now you're thinking that we just gonna eat our last meal and die. See, God has now come to restore the joy of your salvation. He don't want you to have death on your mind. He wants you to have life on your mind. He won't give you life and he wants to give it to you abundantly. He don't want you to be short-sighted or short-minded. He wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to know you're gonna eat today, you're gonna eat tomorrow, you're gonna eat next month, next year, because I'm your God. And I'm going to prove myself to you. He said, here. And she was going to fetch it. He called her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a little morsel of bread in thy hand. Wait a minute now. You agree. <laughs> now, you did good by asking for the water. Now, before I can get the water, now you're asking for bread. <laughs> What's up with this now? I ain't even got to get your water yet. Now you want some bread. Uh -huh. Don't invite me to your house. <laughs> Get some of that sweet tea before you go there and cut that right down. <laughs> See, Pastor, you asking for too much right now. Yeah, so. Amen. Amen. I, I pull that spirit. I thought, oh, so you, you got an attitude? <laughs> you know, the Bible says you should serve as you're serving the Lord. <laughs> Smile while you're getting my tea. <laughs> I'm just playing with y'all. I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Why do I need bread? Because your son going to die and bread is healing is the children's bread. What you're feeding me in the natural, I'm going to do stuff spiritually. There's going to be an exchange going on between us. You're going to serve me in the natural and I'm going to release the spiritual in your life. That's the way it should be, y'all. You take... you. Bless the man and woman of God, the one man and woman of God, release the spiritual into your life, which is going to help the natural go from a little to a lot. Right. He says here, he says, and she was going to fetch it. He called her, bring me the bread. And he said, this way, this is what she said. As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little uh, the oil and the cruise and behold I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Look at she said all I got. I have not a cake. All I got is meal. I got grain that has been beaten down. 
And all I got is a little oil to put on the grain. And now I'm going to get two sticks. And lest a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it'll abide alone. Y'all still ain't catching. I got the meal that has been beat down. And I got the oil, which is the anointing. And I'm going to get two sticks to put some fire to it, judgment. So that me and my son can eat and live. This woman is prophesying. Don't even know she prophesied. Y'all still ain't calling. She is prophesying already to the prophet. And she don't know that she prophesied. She's speaking about the grain or corn or wheat. The grain or wheat that's going to fall to the ground and die. With the anointing on it on two sticks. Hey, hey. That we may eat it and live. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, guess what? Then you'll have life in you. You thinking about dying, but you just spoke life and don't even know you spoke life. Good God Almighty, she now the prophet here in the prophecy. Oh, just when we think that we know everything, God will speak some stuff through some folks who got a deaf mentality, but all of a sudden words come out of them and we catch it. Wait a minute now. What you know about the grain of wheat falling? What you know about the anointing? What you don't know about the cross? What you know about eating and then you think you're going to die? <clears throat> but you're going to live. But you got to die to self so that you can live. You can't be selfish and live. You have to die and I have to die to ourselves that we might live. Guess what? If you lose your life, you're going to find it. But if you keep it, you're going to lose it. If you don't give God your life, you're going to lose it. But if you give it to him, guess what? You're going to live. Here it is. He says here, and Elijah said unto her, oh, baby, fear not. The spirit of fear is the tagalong to the spirit of death. I'm going to say that again. The spirit of fear is the tagalong to the spirit of death. When people are afraid, Right behind that fear is a fear of dying. I'm going to say it again. The spirit of fear is the tag along to the spirit of death. You show me a person who's in fear and anxiety, I show you somebody who's thinking about death. Am I right about it, y'all? So Elijah has come to remove that spirit of fear and death that is pervading the land because the war. Is not too far away. But when a man of God comes, he represents life. I'm going to say it again. The man of God should represent life. I'm going to say it one more time. The man of God should represent life. See, when a man of God comes and he okay with everything around him dying, something is wrong with that individual. Yes, sir. Y'all yeah. yeah, with me? When I go on my prayer walk every morning, you know what I say? Father God, we shall live and declare your works. And that no one that is covenantly connected to the fellowship where you, you bless me to feed your people. Not, no premature death in the name of Jesus. I believe the blood of Jesus. They shall live long and declare the works of God. You better have a man of God who's not agreeing with fear and death, but is speaking life over you. It makes a difference. I'm telling you, if you don't have the man of God, Speaking life over you, the enemy is whispering death in your ears. Show me a fellowship where the man of God is okay with folks just dropping off dying. I'll show you a fellowship that I'll be ready to tip out of. Mm -hmm. Nah, y'all going dying there, not me. Not me. Amen. I've been over here, you listen to something, I say, oh, no, that ain't me right there. I should live. You're going to get sick and die. Not me. Maybe you. Not me. By your strength. I'll be preaching to myself while they're preaching to them. Okay, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. Here it is. He said, go do as you have said. He said, you can do just what you want. Just what you said you're going to do. Do it. But this is what you do. When you do it, make me there a little cake first. Oh. Give it to the representative that represent God first. And then when you give it to me first, this is what's going to happen. See, baby, I represent God. 
And when you give to me, you give it to the representative, and then the representative can talk back to the main office. And he can get contact headquarters and say, say, look at the headquarters, we got one that believes you. Uh, now, oh, release the word over, thank you, Lord. I can release the word over you, because now you trust him. He says here, now, give me a little cake first, bring it to me, and then after that, make thee for then. Wait a minute, this, this, this sounds crazy. See, God will require that you do stuff that don't make sense. First of all, if I only got enough for me and my son, if I give you to, to you first, I'm not going to have enough for us. See, but this is how it is in the spirit realm. When you give to God first, he's going to make sure that you have more than enough. But the natural mind cannot work cannot receive the things of God because they are foolish to him because they are spiritually deceptive. This woman, guess what? When you've been around witchcraft long enough and somebody being a warlock, you are used to the spirit realm. God now is just going to connect you to the right realm. He's going to correct, connect you to the right source, I should say. Now you ain't going to be dealing with the devil. You're going to be dealing with God. You used to dealing with the devil, but now you're going to be dealing with God. You used to, to dealing with the juju and the witch doctors and all that, but now you're going to deal with a prophet. And the prophet going to speak to you. And the prophet's going to make sure. Now, guess what? Do the witches now have your plate full? Go get me some chicken feet. Go get me a picture. Y'all don't want to work with me. Put a penny in some water, put it up under your bed. Oh, y'all don't want me to go deep. Come on now. Come on, come on now. Uh-huh. Get you some hot peppers, put them on the string, put them over your door. Oh, don't stop, Pastor. You're going too deep now. You're going too deep, Pastor. You're going too deep. How that work for you? Still got sick. Children still cut up. Man still left you. Get in the book. Y'all quiet, y'all don't turn your head, y'all don't switch on me. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. How you know? It's in Athens, too. Same mess when I was growing up. Going somebody how what? Why? I thought, Grandma, I thought those were supposed to be in the collard green, baby. They supposed to be. How would they need to bring them down, Grandma? That's supposed to that, that you put those in collard green. Why they got them up there? Baby, they they, they ain't trusting in the law. Y'all don't want to get rid of women. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Get the peppers down and put them in your collard cream. And bless them in the name of Jesus. And don't think they're going to do anything for you but make the atmosphere stinky. <laughs> That's not going to work. If it did, you wouldn't be down to your last cake with no help. Hope. For some reason, I didn't preach this today. <laughs> See, when you're doing all that stuff, you ain't got nothing but a death mentality. Yes, Amen. You're going to keep doing all that stuff to eventually, eventually, the devil will graduate you to, now you got to give up a person. Now I want some living blood from a living person for me to get you what you want and really you ain't gonna get what you want because I'm after to kill you. And I want to lock your generational line into a familiar spirit being assigned to your family to follow you through successive generations. And can I tell y'all something? A lot of us is dealing with stuff because witchcraft was introduced into the family and now there are spirits of infirmity, all kind of stuff following us and it gets, unless it's illuminated by the man or woman of God or God gives you revelation, there's stuff you're dealing with that the doctors don't know about, they can't tell you about, they don't know, they're confounded. Why? Because it takes the Holy Ghost to reveal spiritual things. Oh, X-ray can't find it, CT scan, MRI scan, blood work can't find it. It can only show the results of why it's happening. You need a man, a woman of God that's anointed to say it's witchcraft. You shall live and not die. Stop being scared. Drive your car. Go to church. Don't be scared at the door at the job. 
She speak anything on you in the name of Jesus. Where we perform the gift, she shall prosper. If she says something, it's going to return right back to her. She will be able to get out of bed. She better leave you alone because your man of God is sending everything back. They come after you. Now go eat lunch right in front of her baby. Y'all with me? And then watch her. Watch you. While I prepare a table before your enemies. And you eat in her face when you get the promotion. There you go. Y'all don't believe me? Y'all don't believe me. It's already started. It's already happened. Folks don't get promotion. They are. Folks are getting promotions already. Amen. You been that word I've been on the prayer walk dealing with the little witch. You know what I'm gonna do, Lord? I, I got my boy on the prayer walk. He talking to me about her. I'm gonna tell him what to do to take care of her, speak the word, and then I'm gonna deal with her. Cause now I got somebody representing me who ain't scared. They ain't never scared. Man, let one of them miss with one of y'all. Oh, you said another mile, Lord, ain't nothing to it. Hey, I'll be walking and jumping, Lord. All right, let me move on. Look at here it is. He said, but for thus say, see, a lot of folks say thus said the Lord. You can't say thus said the Lord and the Lord ain't saying nothing. Hey, I tell you folks who think they prefer that, I said, look here. Don't say that thus said the Lord when the Lord has not said anything. All right? It's like Amos. Amos said, the Lord God will do nothing except he reveal the secret to his servants, the prophets. Jesus. Amen. The lion of heaven roared. Mm -hmm. Who can but declare? If God ain't said it, how are you going to say, thus said the Lord, you misrepresent him? You get yourself in some trouble. Yes. Amen. You ain't going to hear me say much, thus said the Lord. Why? You must be standing right in the flow of God's throne room, hearing that kind of stuff. That you can use his name like that. You got me? Amen. You got be reverent and respectful because guess what, y'all? We live in these fleshly bodies. We got issues and dramas and stuff that God still works. And even if God gives you a word, you still got to get, get it through your skewed perspective and judgmental attitudes. That many times God gave me a word, he said, first, straighten your attitude out. Because it, it'll be the right word, but, but delivered with the wrong tongue. Right. Oh, you're going to get this word. Well, who want a word if you get to him like that? <laughs> Just say, you know, the, the Lord would have you do this. And you go, oh, thank you. But if I can go, have you do that? you already like, see, <laughs> I'm bad to say, but you test me. Yeah, I've been saved 15 years, but see, you don't took me back to that first year when I when I was just quoting, Lord, am I really saved? See, you about to take me there. Come on, y'all. Y'all know I'm real, right? Really. I, sometimes I wish, Lord, can I just go down there and just give a nice exegetical word, you know, and have it sound studious, you know, and a nice word. He's like, no, you got to get real with them. You, you got me? If y'all ever hear me come and just say, Pastor, cut it out. <laughs> mm -mm, give it to us uncut. Y'all with me? Because if I'm like that, y'all, y'all know it ain't being real. Amen. In certain places you give the word a certain way. He said, This is the Lord God. The, notice that she gave up a cake, but now he talked about a barrel. God said, You gave up a cake, but guess what? He talked about the barrel. So now that little bit now. The, man, the mind of the man of God is bigger than the cake that you gave him. If you give him a 20, he's thinking about, Lord, hit it 30, 60, 100 fold. You, you, you got me? He's thinking about, oh, look at that bank account. I see it, Lord. Mm. Oh, they're going to hit a number, number when the taxes come. Oh, mm, hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Amen. Anybody ever been typing in? They had a typo? Amen. Amen, because you got to make sure them fingers flow right, right? Lord, let it hit it with the pinky with the F and zero on there. Pow. Y'all ain't with me? Amen. Amen. 
And then we were dealing with an issue. Somebody said, you know, Pastor, I need you to pray about something. I said, you know, I'll go pray to the Lord. So we said, and I saw the person at the desk. And I, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm just waiting on you to tell me what to do. And he said, speak to him. I said, all right, hit it. <laughs> Came back next week. I said, look for it. What you mean, look? You told me to pray, and now you don't want to receive the blessing of the answer prayer? I mean, I mean, I mean, stop holding. The problem is you're holding up your own stuff. I mean, because I ain't wasting no time praying if you don't want it. Right. Amen. I, you know, I'll tell my hey, put my address in. <laughs> if you don't want it. Why am I hearing that address? I thought her address was dead. Amen. Would it be something that they send in my address and I bring the check? Here goes your check that you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all do about the that? <laughs> and it didn't have my name. I'm going to cash it. Give it to you. Well, how she get your name? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to do that to you. The barrel of meal shall not waste. He didn't say you're going to have another cake. He said, the barrel of meal shall not make. You had a handful in the barrel. The whole barrel will not stop flowing. <clears throat> the word of God in the mouth of the man of God who has been given authority by God can change numbers, resources, situations. So that increase comes forward. Y'all remember Jesus with the bread and the fish? And he said, Father, I thank thee. And then folks just kept eating and eating and eating. And afterwards, they have 12 baskets full left over. See, the word of God in the man's mouth helps your bank account. It helps your medical report. But better yet than dealing with the physical, let's go into the spirit realm. It clears your court case in heaven so that demons can no longer afflict you because of the blood of the Lamb of God is applied. And where the blood is applied, there is, guess what? The sin has been remitted. And the demons can't mess with you no more. Lord, have mercy. He said, until the day the Lord sent the rain upon he now puts a time period on you going to eat till it rain again. Ain't it something when the people who should be blessed are not blessed, but God sends the man of God to another territory, to some folks who will receive the word so that the blessing of the Lord shows up in their life for a time period until the rain comes, until the refreshment comes, until God changes all right, till he changes the judgment to now is up. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I wish y'all would get with me. Here it is. And the Bible says, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Did she say, I don't know? Did she say, I don't know who you think you is that you got to eat before me and my boy? Mm -mm. See, sometimes the mouth will get you in trouble. Like sometimes you need to just take, not sometimes, all the time, we need to take the word, perform the word, so we can see the miracle that comes from the word. She went, did, now look, she and he and her house. Y'all got to catch this. Not only did she feed her and her son and Elijah, but her family ate out of her obedience. Your family's Connection is dependent upon your obedience. God's going to bless you so much that it's not just about you and your child or your children, your wife, your husband, or whoever, but he wants to bless your whole family. God is interested in your whole, your whole family is connected to your obedience. I'm going to say that again. Your whole family is connected to your obedience. Yes. Who you think your folks going to turn to when they know ain't nobody else eating, but you still got bread at your house. You think they ain't gonna wanna come to church to hear the word of the Lord when everybody else slack, but you still good? 
God is interested in just you. Could it be your connection is your ministry to your family? And here it is. And the barrel of the meal wasted not. Neither did the crews of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. The word in the anointing on those natural resources did not cease. I'm going to say that again. The word in the spirit kept flowing. The word in the anointing kept flowing. When God does stuff supernatural on the natural, it keeps flowing until the cycle is changed back in the natural to the flow of blessing. I'm going to say that again. We need to hear this because we are entering a time when resources will start to be limited. And we need to live supernaturally. And when we live supernaturally, then <clears throat> until the time changes, God is going to make sure that stuff keep flowing. Oh Lord, I'm going to say, y'all stand up, 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 y'all need some oil on knees and hips, don't you, y'all? Amen, amen. The point I'm trying, the reason I'm so long is this, you all. We might not know it and we might not, not really believe it because we are spoiled over here in America. We're spoiled. What I mean by spoiled, we've been tremendously blessed by the Lord. And we haven't really experienced really, really hard times. But we could be about to head into some hard times. And if we don't understand how to obey God's instructions, and I'm talking about men and women of God and the people of God together will have to work one with another so that God can release the anointing for the blessings. Because guess what? God's word to the people is the word that was going to feed the prophet. And the word that was going to be released to the family is going to release resources so that the family can be taken care of. What it really boils down to is do you have faith in God? Do you have a relationship with the Lord? God sent the man of God to the house where there was a woman who would believe the word. Do you believe the word, Lord? Are you ready to surrender your life to the Lord? God wants to increase the peace every day. I like that shirt, pretty girl. Increase the peace every day. God wants to get us to the point where every day, no matter what goes on, we still have peace. The Bible says, I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on on you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're about to go.